Do you need help in your business? Do you feel like you are constantly running from project to project, task to task, and you never have time to actually work on the deep work in your business that requires you to grow? I get it, I've been there, and I work with business owners all the time who feel the exact same way. And maybe you've tried to hire a VA before or an OBM and things still haven't worked the way you wanted to. Maybe things have fallen back on you or not gotten done. Or maybe you're not in the position to hire right now, but you really need some help. Well, I have some good news for you because you can actually use and set up your systems to work for you in your business like an assistant. Sometimes for specific things, you don't even have to manage them. You can just set them up and they will run for you and do all the things that you don't want to do manually. Hey guys, Christy here from DeSilva Life and I am so excited about this video because it is gonna teach you how to set up your systems to run like your assistant. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to our channel if you wanna make sure you get all of these systems and organization content that you need. So let's dive in. What are the benefits of creating systems in your business? You waste less time, like creating tasks, sending invoices, checking in on your email inbox a million times a day, coordinating schedules and scheduling calls. You can finally get more free time in your business to be able to do deep focus project work, to be able to continue learning more about what you love or maybe skills you wanna add, or just take some time off, unplug and get some rest. Setting up systems that can save yourself so much stress and energy from hiring. It takes a lot of time and energy to train a new team member, but you can actually set up your systems to do the entire training process for you. And you'll finally know what to do and when, when hitting your desk in the morning, instead of staring at a blank piece of paper or one that has a million things to do. And you'll just be able to tackle exactly what needs your attention right now. Okay, let's start with incoming leads. So this is great right? You want more business? But I have personally been to the point in my business where I'm like, oh my gosh, we have more leads coming in. I don't even know how we're going to be able to handle this project. So if you're there, I hear you. I feel you. I've been there and it's going to be okay. So let's just get that out of the way first. Then let's talk about how I have set up my honey book, my CRM to be able to do so many things for me when it comes to incoming leads. Well, first of all, I have my leads pipeline in HoneyBook that has all of the incoming leads. If someone fills out my contact form on my website, it's automatically going into my account. It's also triggering through my app Zapier into my ClickUp leads pipeline that I've set with every single nitty gritty task that I have to do when this lead comes in. From there, I'll be able to see if this lead is a good fit and then send them a canned email to book a call with my scheduler or if I can refer them to someone else. Now my scheduler is blocked off with my Google Calendar, both business and personal, so that nobody can book a call when I am busy. You do not have to manually coordinate schedules with someone and send emails back and forth to try to find a good time to grab a call. Never mind the fact that my Zoom account is hooked up to my HoneyBook so that when this person books their call, it automatically is in my Zoom waiting for me to just start the meeting on that day and it is sending them two reminders Reminders, one the day before our call and the other one one hour before our call. This whole leads process from the lead coming in to sending them the email to booking the call is all automated through my HoneyBook. There are only a few times I just have to pop in and see what I have to do for this lead, pull up that canned email template and send it over. Then you also might be saying, well, Christy, I get on a call with this person, I send them a proposal, it takes me forever. Well, that's where HoneyBook comes into. If you have a brochure,
your set that sends to them after their initial inquiry, they can check off the service that they're interested in and it will automatically draft a proposal in their client portal. So after that discovery call, you just go ahead and send it over. With Smart Fields, it auto fills all their information. So it's just a click of a button away from being in your hands to theirs. And you might be thinking, what about the follow-up process, checking in on this lead? Well, you can upload a follow-up workflow that as soon as you send that proposal, then it triggers three follow-up emails for you to just send in any timeline that you choose, whether it's 24 hours, 48 hours, seven days later. So you can go ahead and just send those emails to check in with them if they haven't responded about the proposal. Now, if they did respond and they went ahead and signed and paid, you can also have a workflow triggering them to send the welcome email and then for them to book their kickoff call. Again, with HoneyBook Automations, this is all automated for you and you can write whatever email you want for these workflows. So you can make them super nice and personal or you can even add personal details if you wanna hit that approve before sending. So these are just a few different ways that in my leads process, I have set up my systems, HoneyBook and ClickUp, to work like my assistant. Giving my client all the information they need, checking in with them, and telling me exactly when I need to tend to that project. Okay, now there's another aspect of this. You might be thinking, Christy, well, okay, got the leads thing down. Now what about even knowing my capacity and being able to take on new projects, onboard them, set up their project, all of those details that sometimes can slip through the cracks. Well, I've got a solution. So for this, if you're struggling with managing your workload, what I highly suggest is creating a project template in ClickUp that maps out every single thing that you have to do for that client. Now you may have different client projects. You may work hourly. If you work hourly, it's even easier because you're able to know exactly how many hours per week you have left to be able to take on more clients. But if you work on a project by project basis, I would recommend creating a template of those projects and every single task that you have to do for that project. We have a workflow mapping template in our shop that gives you the framework that you need to map out every task in a project, the different phases, the onboarding forms, if you wanna use dependencies and things like that. And with ClickUp, you can also use time estimates and time track within tasks to be able to know your exact capacity for a specific project. So now, if you get a new client that signs for that project, you can just upload that template, remap the due dates, and then have every single thing in your calendar. So when you get on a call with a new lead, you can see what you already have going on for the client that you've signed. Then you can give them the appropriate start date, how much you can take on, and know that you are still within your margin of your working hours. Okay, so those two examples were when it comes to client work, whether it's leads or client projects. Now, what about the things running in your business? Well, a couple different things here. You can utilize automation to tell every team member what they have to do and when. Let me show you a quick example of some automations that I have in my content calendar and in my leads pipeline so you can see how it's telling everyone what they have to do. These are the automations currently running in my Instagram content calendar. Now I have automations all throughout ClickUp doing different things, but I just wanna show you a few examples in here and my leads pipeline so you can see the different things and examples examples of how to use automations like your assistant. So you can also add a description to your automations. And let me show you an, a few examples in here. So here we have when the status changes to from any to ready for a review, it's going to reassign me and change the due date for two days later. So that way, after my VA goes ahead and creates the content, then I'll be able to just go in and easily review it. It's gonna pop up on my calendar and she's not even gonna have to remind me. ClickUp will do that for us. Then you can see if it needs edits, it's gonna reassign Jess with one day after the trigger date. So that means one day after I move it to needs edits, it's gonna assign her and it's gonna pop back up on her calendar. 
let's see another one um, when it sets to ready to schedule so okay Jess everything is good to go it's gonna reassign Jess with a day after the trigger date and then showing one more that's really cool is I have when the task is created in this list it's gonna add a comment to pull up the task instructions in this right here. So the IG content creation task template living in our SOP library. So if you see all of these tasks in here, you'll see that as soon as I created this, it puts this in the comment section. And here is the content creation task. When I pull this up, it's the exact SOP on how to create a carousel. Now moving on to the leads pipeline, here is where when leads go from they book a discovery call to following up after, after the client books, new inquiry steps, not a good fit, then these are the things we're creating a bunch of subtasks and assigning them to Jeff who's in charge of the leads and the sales process. So you'll see, for example, after a lead books a discovery call, then we want to create a subtask called add sales call date to leads pipeline for, and we put in this task name field because the task name is going to be the client's name. So it's gonna say add sales call date to leads pipeline for Christy De Silva, just as an example. This is gonna assign Jeff and it's gonna be a due date of the trigger date. Then it's gonna say create sales call doc for Christy De Silva and link to the task. Again, assign Jeff for the trigger date. And then one more, move HoneyBook pipeline stage to discovery call for task name, assigned to Jeff on the trigger date. I'll show you one more so you can see the new inquiry steps. So here we have if any, if a task is created and it's showing that the status is inquired because that's where it's zapping it in from Zapier. It's creating a subtask for Jeff to fill in the client details for the new lead for that person. Check out the new inquiry for that person and take the next step. So see if they're a good fit, send a canned email to invite them to a call, etc. And then move status. So it would be follow up, send scheduler, etc. So these are just a few examples of automations just triggering and telling each team member what they have to do at different stages in our pipelines. Pretty dang cool if you ask me. So now you might be saying, okay, Christy, that's great. They have the task, but how do they know what they're supposed to do with it? This is where I suggest everyone have an SOP library. Again, this exact template is in our shop with a million other plug and play resources that you can use to start organizing your business today. So what is an SOP library? It's basically where you create and write out and film all of the instructions for all of the things you want to delegate in your business. Whether it's like yesterday or it's in the future, you can just start banking all of the information that typically lives in your brain and put it somewhere for your team member to follow. Then when you're creating the different tasks within your business or automations are triggering, you can apply these SOP templates. So every time that task ends up on their calendar, they have every single thing that they need to accomplish that task. Creating SOPs and delegating in ClickUp is one of my favorite things and has been so helpful to hundreds of our students and clients. So I've given you quite a few examples here of how you can set up systems to work for you like an assistant, but there is a main foundation here and that is automations. Having your system set up to not only be organized, but automated for you is gonna take so much work and revisions and check-ins off of your shoulders. Now, one of my favorite tools 
to be able to automate virtually anything in my business is Zapier. Zapier is an integrations tool that can connect two softwares together. So for example, like I mentioned earlier, when a lead comes in through HoneyBook, it zaps all that information into my ClickUp lead tracker. I wanna show you this example specifically to give you an idea of the power that Zapier has. So this is the inside of Zapier. You'll see I have all my different folders here and this is my leads folder where I have three different Zaps set up because I have three different contact forms with different questions in HoneyBook depending on what type of lead. So this is my just standard lead coming in from anywhere. Then my HoneyBook Pros lead and ClickUp Consulting lead. So let me pop into just this one and show you how it's set up. So I have that when a new inquiry comes in from HoneyBook, so you choose the event that it's a new inquiry, choose the account, that's mine, and then test the trigger. So this was a test of my own just filling this out. Then I have a filter that it's only continuing if lead source does not exactly match HoneyBook Pros. So that way in the HoneyBook Pros one is the lead source does exactly match HoneyBook Pros because creating the task in ClickUp, when you go to setting up the action, all of these are a little bit different, the questions. So I want to pull in the exact responses from this lead form into the description of my task. So here you'll see this is going into the sales and launches space, into my leads pipeline. The task name is going to be the first and last name, so the full name of the lead. And then I have pulling in this information, email, Instagram handle, website URL, the different questions like how long have you been in business? And that is it. It's going to pop up in the inquiry status and then it's going to trigger those subtasks that you saw before in the automation section. So Zapier is such a great tool to be able to give me all the information I need, give my team members the information they need, and all this is done as soon as this lead fills out this contact form in my HoneyBook. So now that you saw that example of Zapier, here are a couple other things you can have it do. When a new client books, you can have it create a folder in your Google Drive with all the things you need for that project. When a Zoom recording gets downloaded into your Zoom, you can have it immediately upload into Dropbox. And so many amazing things you can do with Zapier. The thing is, these tasks that I'm talking about in this video, you might think they're not that hard and they don't take you that much time, but they compound over time. The admin work, the revisions, the delegating, they all add up and being able to take them off your plate little by little is just setting up your business foundations to be able to grow and scale. Now, if you have a tool or a hack that I haven't mentioned in this video, I would love you to share it with everyone by dropping it in the comments below. And if you liked this video and want more content like this, give it a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe to our channel to let us know. I will be sharing more about how to make your business less stressful and how to make your schedule less busy. So stay tuned. Mm -hmm.